Welcome to the Heels on Water podcast. This is where we learn to walk on the water in our storms with the courage, confidence, and grace we were designed with. I'm your host, Dr. Let Stevens, and I am glad that you found our boat. So let's put on our heels and get ready to step out on that water. Hey there, I have a few questions for you. When you've been in church, have you ever felt like you were the only one who did not feel the presence of God in the room? When you looked around the room, did it seem like everyone else confirmed that he was there and you were the only one who couldn't? This week, I want to talk to the women who have had that awkward experience. You know what? You're not alone. I have been in that same situation. I also have felt like I was the only one in the room not in touch with God, or God wasn't in touch with me. I'm here to tell you to stop stressing and pressuring yourself like that. We are not supposed to rely on feelings to know that God is with us. God is with you. The second half of Hebrews 13.5 briefly repeats Joshua 1.5 by telling us, For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. We can rest assured that God will never leave us. Even when we try to walk away, he does not let us out of his sight, especially us, his daughters. What good father do you know that does not keep a close eye on his daughters, even from a distance? God's daughters genuinely have a special place in his heart. Now back to the question at hand about feeling God's presence. I understand your confusion. Everyone seems to feel God's presence, except you. This makes you wonder if something's wrong with you. This makes you wonder if you're not good enough to get the touch. This makes you wonder if he passed you by, like death passed over the Israelites' doorpost on the first Passover. Did he see you? Did you not pray hard enough? Did you ask for too much the last time and he's ignoring you now? Yeah, I've been there. Now you're at the point where you want to ask for help, for clarification, for answers about this, but you don't because you're afraid to. I understand your fear of being judged by people because asking for help or prayer for this could be awkward or embarrassing and upsetting. Not to mention make you look like you're, I don't know, the oddball. I understand your fear that God may be mad at you or ignoring you because he didn't feel real and you couldn't confirm his presence. I've been both those places too. I submit to you this question. Who said that we had to feel his presence? Where in the Bible did anyone talk about or worry about feeling God's presence to make it legitimate that God was with them. They either believed he was with them or they did not. When they stopped believing he was with them is when they got into trouble. In Matthew 22 verses 36 and 37, Jesus is asked, teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? And then Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Knowing that God is with you will never leave Knowing that God is with you and will never leave you falls under loving him with your mind. When I realized that, I was so relieved. Perhaps you don't perceive feeling God's presence because of issues with men or issues with father figure in your past. Your feelings may have betrayed you in the past and you don't want to rely on them now, so you distance yourself from the possibility or concept of feeling God's presence. Believe it or not, I've been there too. It's actually okay that you don't want to trust your feelings. You're in good company. The prophet Jeremiah agrees with you. In Jeremiah 17, 9, he wrote, The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? 
Earlier on in chapter 9, in verses 23 and 24, Jeremiah made the following statement. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power, or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. This illustrated to me that God does not focus on us getting warm and tingly in his presence, but that we know and understand about him and want to have a relationship with him. If you were blessed to have a good relationship with your earthly father, you probably love, honor, and appreciate him because of what he's done for you. Here's another question for you to consider. Wouldn't it be a little strange to feel tingly when your earthly father enters the room? Likewise, wouldn't it be odd to expect to feel tingly in the presence of your heavenly father? Think about that one for a minute. Now, I don't know where you are in the country or the world, but here in the southern U.S., there's a quaint practice used to address perfect strangers or at least people with whom you're not close. If you're from the south, you probably already know what I'm going to say. There is a widely accepted practice of addressing people with honey or sweetheart. Usually anywhere else, these terms are reserved for people with whom there is an affectionate tie of some kind. In the South, however, that little detail is not necessary. Those terms are used as greetings without any emotional connection, and no one thinks otherwise. On the flip side, I've also been in a situation where someone was brought into my life and this person tried to force me to use terms of endearment that were not reflective of what I felt in our relationship, but it was the expectation. There was no endearment felt from me, and I could not bring myself to use any terms that made it seem like there was, no matter how much the matter was pushed upon me. As a matter of fact, the more it was insisted, the more I pushed back and went the other direction in how that person was addressed. Now, believe it or not, the same things can be done with God. Endearment can be used when no relationship is felt, and those terms can be avoided when there is a distance felt with him, but the expectation surrounding you is that you are close. Again, I've been in both situations. Have you been in either one or both? There was a time in my life when I prayed the expected traditional way, using traditional words to address God. I referred to God as Father, or said Father God, and continued my prayer. I prayed the way I had been taught. Here's the thing. I can look back on that time and realize that for me, saying Father was exactly like saying Mr. I did not intend it to be that way, but I can see now that it was. So because I felt a distance between me and God, because of my resistance to a close relationship, my prayers were also a little distant. So all of my prayers were directed to Mr. God, basically. I did not have a father-daughter relationship with him. I was simply doing as I was taught. Honestly, he was not a father figure to me because of my previous bad experiences and relationships with fathers and men. A relationship with a father had been the last relationship I felt I could trust. At best, God was a benevolent guardian figure who seemed safer to think of as a mother than as a father, like in the movie The Shack. I understood God's positions and functions as Lord and as Savior and as provider, but as father was a huge stretch for me. I'm truly thankful and praise God that he pursued me and was patient enough to wait for me to get beyond those issues. To my surprise, He answered my request and also showed me a friend with whom I could discuss the problem I felt of not feeling God at all. We were not close then, actually just acquaintances, but God used this situation to plant the seed of our beautiful close relationship that we have now. She did not solve the problem, but she helped me talk it out and let me know that I was not spiritually defective. Now I have some good news for you. God is waiting for you. 
God is not only Lord, but he's also Father. We don't have to be good enough. He's not waiting for us to measure up somehow. We don't have to feel his presence to know he's with us. God does not expect or instruct us to verify his presence through a certain feeling. He wants and expects his daughters to know he's with us because he said he is. God himself tells us how he loves us, his daughters, more than any earthly father could in Matthew 7, 9 through 11. It says, you parents, if your children ask you for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? Please believe me that I know how difficult it is to move from the place of setting up camp in a distant land with a large, strong, protective bubble to moving to a close and intimate relationship with God where you are not afraid. It is a total process, but remember that you cannot get from one end to the other without taking the steps and going through the process to get there. Have you ever called out in search of someone only to realize that they were nearby, but you didn't notice they were there? They were near you, but you didn't feel their presence. Did failing to know they were there or acknowledge them cancel out their presence? It's actually the same way with God. He never left you. You stopped acknowledging and recognizing him. Or maybe you never knew what he looked like in your life as he was standing by all along. In faith, believe that he is near you because he said so in Joshua 1.5 and repeated it in Hebrews 13.5, especially when you call on him, praise him, or worship him. He inhabits the praises of his people as it says in Psalm 22.3. He is near to you always. He's just waiting for you to realize it. If you've already accepted him as Lord and Savior, I challenge you to quiet yourself, play some worship music, and seek him. He's waiting on you. If you have not accepted him personally, this is a chance to do that. Speak to God and tell him that you want to be forgiven of your sins and want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Then ask him to lead you to a Bible-following church, which can lead you in a path to build a relationship with him. I'm looking forward to being out here on the water with you. So follow the Heels on Water podcast so you know when the next episode leaves the dock. And share the podcast with a woman you care about. Heels on. Eyes up. Talk to you next Tuesday.